everybody and welcome to another episode of the sugary sweet and i am chef tovia and today i'm going to be showing you guys one of my favorite fudge cake recipes it's easy to make um it's perfect if you don't know how to bake and you don't have to worry about ingredients being at room temperature this cake is almost impossible to mess up unless you mess up the measurements and the baking time so we're going to go over quite a few details here that are going to help you guys out so please listen to the video because i will probably answer your questions before you even leave it in the comment section so for our recipe um we're gonna go over the ingredients here so we're gonna go over our wet ingredients first and our wet ingredients we have here is some hot coffee freshly brewed coffee and um, i'm use you can use any type of coffee you desire um i'm using chocolate coffee chocolate cappuccino coffee why not this is a chocolate cake so we're going to be using a cup of hot brew coffee we're going to be using a cup of buttermilk this is whole cultured buttermilk here okay none of that no fat stuff and if you cannot find buttermilk in your area um you can just use regular milk um if you want to make buttermilk by adding some type of acidity such as lemon or vinegar to the milk um, just one cup of regular whole milk and just add like a teaspoon and a half of you can use vinegar You can use lemon juice or you can use orange juice anything acidity of that nature. It'll work It's not technically a true buttermilk because buttermilk is it's, it's a totally different process of how it's made so um, our next ingredients here is two eggs We have two teaspoons of vanilla extract and then we have here two cups of sugar and yes, sugar is considered to be a wet ingredient because of the way that it has to be processed when you bake with it. And most recipes call for a certain amount of liquid to sugar, and it's also do with baking's percentage. So because of the way the sugar has to be processed, um, instead of adding more liquids to your cakes, you would add usually a tremendous amount of sugar and less liquids. And most of the time because of the fact that sugar is a wet ingredient. Well, in all cases, sugar is a wet ingredient. If you don't believe me, throw sugar in a pot, turn it on, turn, throw sugar in a pot, put it on the stove on medium high heat and watch it melt down to liquid form. You cannot do that with flour. But I'll go into more details, but I'm using two cups of unprocessed brown sugar and I'm using a Zucca Molina sugar. Um, so for our dry ingredients, we have here two teaspoons of baking soda and a teaspoon of regular salt. You can use fine sea salt if you desire. I have here, I have a cup of unsweetened dark cocoa powder, a quarter cup of regular sweet unsweetened cocoa powder, as well as a teaspoon of baking powder. And I have here one and three quarters of a cup of all purpose flour. So we're gonna go ahead and begin by putting our recipe together. Before I uh, start, some extra tools that you're going to need is a French whisk, which is this French whisk. It's long and narrow and it helps you whisk pretty much anything in any situation, especially in pots. You're going to need a rubber spatula to do a bit of scraping. And then I have here six inch round cake pans. I have four here on standby that I've already sprayed with baking spray. And also I cut out some parchment paper and you can find the recipe um, you can find a tutorial on how to cut parchment paper quick and easy for your round pans so um, also a cake tester if you don't have a cake tester this is just used to test the cake doneness um, you can use toothpicks or you can use a skewer okay so um, we're gonna begin with this recipe like I said this is a beginners video so I have here a sift and um, this is a, some people call it a strainer some people call it a sift. So a sift and a strainer is pr practically the same thing. Um, the holes are smaller and its intention is to strain. Um, a colander has bigger holes, so this is not a colander. So um, we're gonna sift our flour, baking powder, baking soda, And salt. We're gonna throw all that into the sifter. Make sure I get all that baking soda out here. I'm gonna just give that a quick 
sift together this ensures you don't have any lumps as well as any lumps in your baking soda or baking powder because you don't want to bite into that because it's going to be disgusting and those lumps are going to keep your cake from rising properly so we're going to set that here to, um, to the side for a moment so I have a little smaller whisk and we're going to whisk together the part of our wet ingredients here which is going to be the milk, the eggs, and the oil, as well as the vanilla extract. So we're whisking all the ingredients together. The reason why we're whisking them separate is because when we go to add it to the flour we don't want to over over mix the cake because we're going to end up with a tough cake so that's the key thing just so after mixing those together separately I'm going to use my liquid measuring cup here and I'm going to pour one cup of this coffee I didn't make a very strong batch of coffee but you know you can make it as strong as you want but I just make sort of a light batch of coffee. So that's one cup of that coffee in the same cup we had the oil in. So in case you're wondering what those little. So we're going to go back to our main mixing bowl here. With our dry ingredients. And I have my whisk. And I'm going to add to it the dark cocoa and the regular cocoa. then we're going to add the sugar. The sugar is going to act as an abrasive. So when we go to mix the mix all the dry ingredients together, the sugar is going to break all that cocoa apart. And then when we hit it with the hot coffee, it's just going to literally dissolve. You might have a few lumps, but don't worry about that. So after mixing the sugar the cocoa with the dry ingredients here we're going to add our milk mixture and I'm just going to just whisk it lightly once I start to see it begin to incorporate with the flour and the sugars here like you see here okay I'm going to pour over one cup of hot coffee. This coffee is hot. I just took it off the coffee machine. It's not going to scramble the eggs because we've already partially, we've already mixed it with other ingredients. So I'm just going to, I should have used a larger bowl, but that's okay. So I'm going to just whisk until it's almost completely smooth. It doesn't have to be entirely smooth, but you don't want any huge lumps of flour. So I'm just going to just whisk this for about a minute so the batter is almost smooth like I said just you know you don't want to overwork it I'm going to use the spatula to just scrape around the bowl here to make sure there's no dry bits of flour or sugar that's left untouched now I'm going to give you guys a tip with my oil I used um Wesson oil try to just use an oil that's not you know like store brand and use a really good baking powder and baking soda don't use store brands because you know the quality of them are actually really are not as high so your cake is not going to come out looking the same if you use different ingredients your cake is not going to look the same as mine so I have here my cake pans that I showed you earlier and I'm just going to eyeball I'm going to pour it about halfway you want to use a spoon to scoop it out you could but I'm just gonna fill it halfway now this pan right here that I'm using is a cake boss pan the quality of it is thicker and heavier this first one so this is a cake boss pan now because this pan is thicker I know we're not gonna have any we shouldn't have any doming issues with that but if you use really good really expensive baking pans and stuff you shouldn't have to worry about your cakes doming sometimes it happens with the recipe but 
this time it's the cake pans. So I'm filling the second one. I just have it side by side so I can see that they're going to be equal some equal amount of batter. Then I go here to my third one. Okay, so the remaining batter I'm just going to divide them between between the three pans here. The remaining cake batter I just poured in the side of the. So I think this one might need a little bit more. My oven is preheated at about 340 degrees. If you guys have an oven, electric oven that you turn the knob on, uh, just turn your knob a little um, bit before 350 degrees. And you should be okay with your oven. So we're using pans that are a little bit smaller. If you're using larger pans, I would do 350 degree Fahrenheit. And if you're doing cupcakes, then I would do 325 degrees Fahrenheit. The cupcakes will bake between 18 to 25 minutes, but these pans here would bake between 20 to 25 to 35 ish minutes, give or take. So I'm going to put these in the oven. Um, these may dome, as I said, because these are two different pans. These are um, aluminum pans, but they feel pretty thick, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put these into my oven that's preheated. Um, it's really good to preheat your ovens you know for a good 30 minutes or so um, because your cake your oven just really needs to be at the right temperature before you put your cakes in there and that will also prevent your cakes from overcooking and not cooking or not baking properly um, and we're going to make sure that the rack to your oven is fixated to the center of your oven so we'll be back once these are done so our cakes our done or our timer went off has been 30 minutes so I'm gonna check the doneness so um, the cakes are pretty flat I know they're probably gonna sink back down a little bit once they cool off but the doming isn't too bad so um, the third one I'm pulling out doesn't look done so I have my cake tester here and it's a little bit dirty so I'm going to put that back in the oven for about another six minutes. And the other ones are good. So the third one's going to go back in the oven for about another six, seven minutes. So I'm going to let these cool on the wire rack. And once the other one is done, just um, put them on your rack and let them cool for about 30 minutes and then we're going to invert them out of the pans and allow them to cool on the rack entirely so our cakes have cooled for 30 minutes and i'm going to just flip them out and it should just come out with no problem because we use that baking spray that had the flour in it so it just comes out with a problem so i'm just going to let them stay on the rack upside down to cool completely and you can cross and fill them however you like check out my channel for more recipes as well as different frosting recipes and if you found this tutorial helpful please i urge you to subscribe to my channel and when you hit the notification bell um, just know that you'll be notified of my uploads by hitting that bell um, Please live and be well, and thank you so much for watching The Sugary Sweet, where we're making the world a little bit sweeter.